All right, Kathy. Since it was established back in 1939, McDill Air Force Base has been an active partner in the financial growth of the greater Tampa Bay area. You know, for years, air crews have trained here for combat duty, going back to World War II, the Cold War, Korea, Vietnam, the Persian Gulf, of course, most recently, Afghanistan and Iraq. Consider this. Today, the base is responsible for an economic impact in our region of approximately $5 billion. Amazing. Uh, joining us this morning, uh, our first two panelists will be joined by a couple others in a couple of minutes. Congresswoman Kathy Castor, of course. Good morning. And Brigadier, or rather, not Brigadier, I, I'm shortchanging you, four-star retired General Arthur Light, most recently Commander Air Mobility Command at Scott Air Force Base in Illinois. And Thank welcome you. to you Thank both. You. Thank you for being here. Congressman, you, Congresswoman, more than anyone, I think you realize, not only the economic benefit of McDill, but also from a strategic standpoint, how important it is to our national security. McDill Air Force Base is key to America's national security because of the uh, missions and headquarters on the base. We are home to Central Command. Central Command has the responsibility for everything that's happening in the Middle East. So think about the assignments uh, they have had since September 11th, the war in Iraq and Afghanistan. Uh, they have, uh, we have the best military in the world, and most of them have come through uh, Central Command. McDill is also home to Special Operations Command. Uh, Special Operations is responsible for bringing Osama bin Laden to justice. Uh, you also might remember the pirates, uh, the, the saving lives of the SOCOM and Special Ops saved lives on the Marsk, Alabama. Uh, they are also doing missions all across the globe every day the Navy SEALs, the Army Rangers, and others that most of us will never know about. But uh, this is, and this is the trend in our national security, to focus more on special operations. And we're going to keep that technological advantage. Uh, the, we've had some fantastic commanders, uh, especially at SOCOM with Admiral Eric Olson and now Admiral McRaven, who was on the ground during that bin Laden operation. McDill is also home to the sixth Air Mobility Wing. Now, Air Mobility is the backbone for our national security. It doesn't get a lot of uh, a lot of attention, but they take 750 sorties every day, refueling tankers, saving troops through aeromedical evacuation uh, in in the combat zones, uh, cargo drops all across the globe, responding to national uh, international disasters. So McDill is absolutely key to our national security. This is where the action is, uh, right here in Tampa Bay. And you can see on the screen we have some of its history right there, officially activated in April 1941. Think about that prior to Pearl Harbor. General Light, you were with, uh, of course, uh, the, uh, the Air Command in, uh, in Illinois. So 6th Mobility Air, uh, 6th Air Mobility Wing was under your jurisdiction. That's correct. And that's how you really became familiar with McDill and Tampa. Right. But explain to me, uh, th this is a rapid deployment that you can do anywhere in the world. Right. And I saw an article you wrote that going back in time, before aviation, this was done on the water with ships. That's, that's correct. And, and consider now how quickly you can be somewhere. Right. Well, as the Congresswoman has pointed out, McDill is just a fantastic place. With three primary players in this war on terrorism with United States Central Command, Special Operations Command, and the 6th Air Mobility Wing, which I'd like to focus on a little bit because they fly KC-135 aerial refueling tankers. They're the big gas station in the sky that allows us, as we call it, to put global reach into our nation. We can go anywhere in the world in a relatively short period of time because we can set up an air bridge going over to Europe, going over to the Mideast, or to the Pacific, and it's made up of those tankers. And those tankers will get the job done. And it allows us, really, to go with a clenched fist if we're going after our enemies to put bombs on target, or we can go with an outstretched hand to deliver humanitarian aid, because it, it will refuel the cargo carriers to get people and, place, and, and equipment in place during natural disasters, as earthquakes, or even hurricanes, hurricanes even for our own country, uh, Air Mobility Command will be there. Now, those people flying those KC-135s are a lot younger than the plane itself, because those KC-135s are over 50 years old. We bought them during the Eisenhower era, 1956 to 1963, 
and we're still flying them. And quite frankly, with all the budget concerns and issues, we may be still flying them way out into the year 2040. So they'll be around for a long time. Now the airplanes are safe, but it's just like taking out your 1957 Chevy. You like to drive it around in Tampa with the sun shining. You're not expecting it to drive your daughter to college from Florida out to maybe the West Coast. Right. It takes an awful lot of maintenance to keep those airplanes flying. I, I will tell you, every time I've seen video of a KC-135 refueling another aircraft, I, can, I still can't believe they can do that in midair. How do they do that? That technology is phenomenal. And to know that it's that old is amazing, yes. even more amazing. So there is another aircraft, the KC-46. Is that the next generation of refueling tanks? That's correct. That's, okay. that's on the horizon. Uh, their contract has been let to, to get new tankers for the Air Force. Uh, we're starting out with 179, and they will be brought into the inventory, uh, hopefully as quickly as possible. We need them soon. We needed them yesterday uh, because it will free up those maintainers that work. For every hour of that tanker being in the air, there's some poor maintenance guy who's been working 7 to 10 hours on the ground to keep that airplane flying. Congresswoman, there are, there are budget challenges mm -hmm. always. Over the years, there have been, there's been scuttlebutt. McDill may be in, in danger of closing, and of course, I'm sure you fight long and hard to make sure that doesn't happen. But going forward now, what are the challenges keeping the base here and viable? Well, McDill Air Force Base isn't just key to our national security, it's also key to the economic vitality and the future of the entire Tampa Bay region. Uh, there is no threat that McDill is going to close. We've made significant investments in Central Command, Special Operations Command. Uh, we have 15,000 military personnel. Uh, at the base. And when you add in spouses, family, civilian employees, it's approaching 40,000. Now, what we have done to ensure McDill's uh, future is to kick off a community wide effort called McDill Means Mobility to make the best case for McDill Air Force Base to win those new KC 46 air refueling tankers. We have a very good chance because McDill Air Force Base is one of the premier Air Force installations uh, across America. The personnel who work there on the KC-135s now, now are outstanding. And we're in a win-win situation, win the KC-46 or maintain the KC-135 mission for decades to come, along with Central Command, Special Operations Command, uh, NOAA, uh, aeromedical evacuation. Our future is very bright at McDill and here in Tampa Bay. We have two more guests I want to bring in to talk about uh, the impact of McDill. They're both very, very familiar with it. Uh, first of all, Brigadier General Chip Deal who was commander of the 6th Air Mobility Wing at McDill Air Force Base and is now uh, retired. <laughs> General, come on in. And Greg Celestin, the CEO of the Celestar Retired Army Lieutenant Colonel. There's a, a congressman with a lot of brass here this morning. Have you noticed that? <laughs> yes, you really should awkward. salute. <laughs> uh, General Deal, I want to start with you. Uh, when you were at McDill, uh, you were the base commander. I was. And so we had just had Mayor Buckhorn on, and it's, it's, now, it's sort of like being the mayor uh, of a city within a city, is it not? Oh, it is, most definitely. And the, and the thing is, is that the reason that McDill is such a treasure, the renown that we have around the country, is the fact of how close our community is. You know, the fact that we have 100 to 150,000 retirees that live in this community is a testament to how good we have it. The community relations with Mc, the, the city with McDill is second to none. We won the Abilene Trophy twice. And the Abilene Trophy is given by the Air Mobility Command to the installation that has the best community military relations. And we won that twice. So the real testament is how close the community is. And with that relationship, we can do anything. And hopefully we can talk about it, but the future of McDill Air Force Base is as bright as the legacy we've had for the last 70 years. In, in your view, what is that future? The future, well, the, uh, and Greg Celestan will talk, because he's a testament to a small business, service-disabled, veteran-owned businesses. You see it on the TV, you read it in the papers. We live it every day. And more and more people are moving down to this region because of what we represent in this relationship we're talking about. But we're also the gateway to the high-tech corridor high-tech corridor defined from Tampa Bay out to Orlando, out to Patrick Air Force Base with the Cape, and up to Jacksonville. Right now you're starting to see things such as cyber. McDill and Tampa, anchored against SOCOM and, and Central Command, are already doing cyber. So you take the high-tech element of cyber, you take the high-tech element of UAVs, 
that are going to hopefully go on the East Coast. Right in the middle, we have the modeling and simulation capital of Orlando. And so the high-tech corridor, we are just the portal, the gateway it, to it, that it, corridor. You're saying it all fits together. It, it all comes it, together. It, it, it all comes together. Greg, or, I'm sorry, Colonel. No, <laughs> no Greg is <laughs> fine. <laughs> all right, so you transitioned from military career mm -hmm. into starting your own private consulting business yes. right here. Yes. And so uh, what was the impetus for that? Well, it's just such a great environment. I had a lot of support as I was retiring from the Small Business Development Center out of USF. They were able to provide services that helped someone who hadn't been involved in the business community learn of how to run a business. And then when you come here, now with the state of Florida, the Hillsborough County, it was great from the tax rate, from the fact that we have a large pool of great veterans who have the training that we need, the education that we need. They're motivated to provide those services uh, in support of their country. So it was a great environment for me to start. And then again, I was fortunate because I surrounded myself with very smart people. So uh, that helped out a lot too. You just said something very, very important. Surround yourself with really smart, skilled people and delegate responsibility, which yes. you would learn as an officer in the military. Yes. Correct? That is correct. And that's one of the things too that makes veterans where I think ideally suited to start our own businesses because we understand risk tolerance and risk management. We come to the table already with organizational skills and that can do spirit. You know, we're not afraid to, to fail, to try something, to, and those are all the skills that you need to have a successful business. And, and I have made a lot of mistakes, but the fortunate thing is, again, having the great people in the environment where you can make a mistake and continue and grow the company. Mm -hmm. General, uh, and both of you have been in the position of uh, being a base commander, and I want to talk about how many people ultimately were you responsible for? Well, and yeah, <laughs> during several different right. commands. I should at, at Air Mobility Command, we had 132,000 active guard and reserve that fall under the purview of Air Mobility Command. At most bases, our wing commanders are responsible for anywhere between five and 10,000 active folks but they also have the responsibility for all the families. And so when you were talking to General Deal about being the mayor of McDill Air Force Base, he really was because he's responsible for the health and wealth, well-being of all the forces underneath them plus the families. And that's a big, big important role. And of course, we then turn to our friends in Congress to help out, make sure the schools are in the neighborhood are good and that they're taking care of everything else to allow us for the budget to go forward. Congresswoman, with McDill's population being part of your constituency, how frequently do you interact with the folks at McDill? On a constant basis. And it, let me say, I am so proud to represent such a patriotic community. We are known all across the globe as one of the most supportive uh, communities when it comes to our military families and our veterans. That's why we have so many military retirees. Uh, that move here, that stay here, that start small businesses like Greg. Uh, we value the, the, our missions in national security. And just look at McDill Air Force Base. If you have an opportunity to go, the investments we've made in base housing, we have more families living on the base. Uh, we have a beautiful new chow hall. Uh, we have upgraded all of the Love facility. the military reference, chow. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they call it. Uh, but the, the investments in technology and special operations in Central Command Headquarters and air refueling. This is a unique base in a unique community and we are going to continue to lead the nation uh, when it comes to national security and then economic growth opportunities for businesses of all kinds. Uh, one more quick question uh, for General Deal and that is this. When you were uh, in command at McDill, you said you had this wonderful relationship with mm -hmm. the larger Tampa Bay community. Sure. So you made a concerted effort, an outreach program, is that, is that a fair assessment? It's a two-way street, isn't in any relationship, but I think the first time that I walked in, the arms were wide open, and that's why people still come back down here, is because Mil Florida being a military-friendly state, Tampa being so close, it, they just open their arms, and the warmth, you feel it immediately, and that's why people come down here. Yeah, a great place to uh, be in the military, and a great place to stay once you're out of the military, Amen. right? That's, that's <laughs> why I'm here. <laughs> okay. And my two daughters have just joined us. Wonderful. So, everybody great. loves Tampa. Thank you all for being here this morning. We appreciate it very much. We're going to stay on this theme a little bit. Uh, returning to civilian life can be a difficult transition for some veterans, but USF is trying to make that easier. And Kathy will have more on that right after the break.